Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We will be covering the segmented general ledger setup within a Sage Trend Evolution database. Now, within Sage Trend Evolution, we really have two segmented options or general ledger chart of account options. We have a standard option which allows you to create a master sub account platform as well as a segmented general ledger structure which allows you to create different segments based on your different general ledger accounts. And these segments can also be incorporated into your reporting when viewing your financial reports. Let's see exactly how this process is set up and unfolds. Now, when creating a database with an evolution, you can specify which general ledger structure you'd like to make use of. So upon creating a database, you're going to have the screen appearing and you can then specify which structure you'd like to make use of. So we've got our standard master sub account structure, and then we've got our segmented structure. We then also have the ability to, once we specified a segmented structure, label our different general ledger segments. Within Sage Evolution, we allow for the Kate, we allow for the set of up to 10 GL segments, ranging from segment zero up until segment nine. Right, so these segments can now be named at this point, or else we can name the segments or label them after the database has been created. So we then continue with the normal creating the database, and we then log into our newly created database. Firstly, we need to go to our general ledger maintenance defaults and implement a couple of settings with regards to a segmented setup. So general ledger maintenance, I'm going to go to my defaults and we have a segmented setup tab. At this point, I need to specify a segment separator. So in your segmented setup, you're going to have a separator per each segment and the default separator is a forward slash. However, you certainly can make use of some other characters to separate your segments. We then have the ability to label our segments uh, ranging from segment zero up until segment nine. And then you would then just label these segments depending on how you want your GL accounts to be structured. Um, in my case, I'm going to use the segment zero and I'm going to classify that as my account information. And notice is that segment zero always needs to be used in your segmented setup. I'm then going to, for example, use province as my second segment or segment number one. And within province, I'm going to specify a city. And within that, or my last segment is going to form part of the relevant departments within my organization. Now you notice is that we can then specify which segments we want to make use of. So in my instance, I'm only going to use segment zero up until segment three and not make use of segment four so i'm just going to untick that block and it's not going to be in use right so once that's done i've specified my separator as well as specified my labels for my various gl segments and we can continue now remember is that if you create a standard general ledger database um, the system is going to create your default chart of accounts and populate relevant defaults and transaction types with those variance accounts. In the case of a segmented structure, the accounts are created only after the database has been created. So therefore, the various transaction types, the defaults, etc., aren't going to have those accounts available. So you are going to have these types of messages appearing, which you can obviously insert them at this point, or insert them once the accounts have been created. So I'm just going to say no to all um, default messages and we'll come and insert those accounts at a later stage. Right, at this point, I just need to do an exit and log off so that it can implement uh, the segment structures that I've implemented. So I'm just going to say, I'm now at this point going to just exit and log off and we can then log back in and continue with this segmented structure setup. Right, so exit and log off. 
and I'm then going to log back into my database. Right, there we go. So I'm now going to go to General Ledger Maintenance. And what you notice is there's a section called Segments. And at that particular point, we've now got our segments with the relevant names that we specified under our defaults. So now it's a case of simply going to our various segments and then going to input the relevant information that form part of the various segments. So I'm going to start with my account and add and i'm going to give my segment for example a code which is say for example a 100 range and that's going to form part of my sales account um, and then just simply add additional ones so 200 and that can form part of for example fixed assets So it's really a case of at this particular point specifying the various combinations that you'd want to have implemented in your structure based on the account segment. I'm going to move over to the second segment, which is the province, and I'm going to insert the relevant details or the relevant options there. With the code and description. Okay, so I've created my various options for segment number two, and I'll move on to my next segment. And lastly, I'm going to go create my various departments that are going to form part of my full segment. Right, so what I've got here is I've specified the various values that are going to form part of my structure under the four segments I've been making use of. 
and really it's a case of adding the relevant options based on how you want your structured or your deal structured to look when reporting and how you want those accounts set up to be. Right, so once it's completed, I've got my segments and now I can simply go and create my accounts. So now accounts, I can go add an account and I've now got my four segments there and I'm simply going to go specify which segments are linked to this account. So I can say start with 1000s, specify the province, the city, and then the department. And very importantly, specifying the account type. So it's going to be, for example, a revenue type account. Right, so all four segments, there's my description of the account and my account type, and I can then go create the account, and there's my account, and add a new one. So once again, I'm going to be the 100 range, same province and city, however, the department's now going to be different. I'm going to use a different department, and under my account type, the account type's going to remain on revenue. And then I'd proceed with the next account, et cetera. Now, as you can imagine, this could take some, quite some time if you've got a large number of segments, a large number of values within your segment setup. Therefore, you are able to use a wizard by adding a chart of accounts automatically. So I'm gonna click on the Add Chart of Accounts option. And we can now specify to create a new chart of accounts or copy an existing chart of accounts. So I want to specify that I'm going to use my first segment, which is my account, and for the 100 range. And we know that's going to be account based on the revenue account type. And I can specify various filters there for my remaining three segments. I'm going to say clear the filters, which I've done, and I can then continue. So go next. And the system's gonna tell me that based on my filter selection, it's gonna go create all these accounts based on my segment value. Now, what you will notice is that if I look at my options there, we see that there's two options there that aren't ticked. And these obviously are the existing accounts. It tells me that existing accounts will not be created as we can see that these are currently the existing accounts. Right, at this particular point, I'm able to either specify not to add the account for whatever reason or skip the account. However, or I can, for example, at this point, select to add all the accounts with the exception of the existing accounts. Right, so I can specify my account sequencing next. And it just tells me that all these accounts made it successfully and I can finish. Right, so as you can see, in a matter of seconds, I've added the additional 62 accounts, uh, with the exception of the two that I've added previously or manually, and I can continue. So now it's simply a case of going back to a chart of accounts, and I'm now going to specify account. However, I'm going to now use the 200 account sequence. So let's just make this, for example, property, plant, and equipment. I specified all filters for the remaining three segments and all those accounts will be created. Next, all those accounts be added successfully, and I can finish. Right, and it's simply a case of creating the relevant accounts for your different account sequencing, so that it creates all those accounts based on the relevant combinations based on your segments. Now, just remember is that, as I mentioned previously, is that if you, for example, go to your transaction types, um, let's just say, for example, under inventory, maintenance, transaction types, you'll see that we have our default transaction types there. However, if I go into one of the transaction types, you'll see that no accounts have currently been specified. So once you've created your general ledger chart of accounts based on your segments, it's really a case of going to each transaction types, going to the defaults, and populating those particular fields with the relevant accounts to be updated when posting transactions. So 
very importantly to ensure that you created your or created your transaction types and your defaults correctly before beginning to process transactions. Now, if we then go, for example, just under the lookups when processing transactions, if I go to general ledger transactions and I go to my journal batches, open up a new batch and on my drop down for the account field, you see that I now have an additional filter selections. I've got my existing chart of accounts there, which I've created. I've got a search opportunity there where I can search for accounts. However, I can also filter by a relevant segment based on my segment setup. So let's just say, for example, we want the ones in the 100 range for that province and that city. And there's my department. Right, so there we go. So as you can see, a real easy way for you to go and filter or search for accounts in the drop-down fields when processing transactions. Now, it's very important to understand that you need to really plan your segmented GL structure before implementing it on your live database. Always a good thing just to have a detailed plan, what you want your reporting structure to look like, and based on those plans, then go and create your various segments and specify the relevant values for those particular segments. Right, so thank you for tuning in. I do hope this presentation has been useful. It's over and out for me, and goodbye.